Hi, how's everybody doing today? This is Draco, on Draco's channel. Right now, I'm in the middle of a kind of a start building me. Uh, some of you may recognize this as the Lunar Landing Module. And this is Tranquility Base. This is 148 scale. And uh, this is from the box open from the box opening till then. I usually do about an hour and a half, two hours. But I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm gonna kinda close things up here kinda quick today because I've had a really long time preparing to film my complaint department segment. Took me a little longer, but it was mostly about these guys. I'll get into that a little bit. But this is about these guys here. Now, I'm not sure if this is Neil or if this is or buzz of the reverse. But last time I had their hands were all flat. Like I've got his hand now going like this off of his arm. Where before it was like this. Okay, that's unnatural. This is more natural. Same thing with uh, this guy here. His hands were, again, I'm showing you how his hands positions were to the, uh, to his body and his arm. I switched it so his hands like this on both sides. And as you can see, and again, it was like this. So basically he was like this and I made him like this. That was a scary cut. Now this is a, uh, Redo kit or repop. This is from 1969 monogram model, and I'm donating this to my granddaughters. And I think it's junior high. I'm not from around here, so I call it junior high, and they call it middle school type deal. So I'm here finishing up the cleanup of the hands. Because, like I said, their hands were way out of position and unnatural. Now, what I did, you'll see in the previous video for this, I uh, took some, took their hands, cut them off, repositioned them, and then glued them back on. Now, in order to make sure I closed everything up and made everything look neat. I put some body putty, which is what you see me working on now. Now, one of the things I did, and I'm going to show you here in a second, is um, I put some body putty, put some uh, thinner or cleaner or yeah, thinner and uh, did, did a paintbrush and in the thinner and then dipped it into the um, putty and then brushed it on like this well now I gotta clean that up and that's gonna take a little bit of work now I need two things to do that here's one So the little stand that I made, and just so you can see it. Now I made that stand for my iPad. Now you might ask what I'm going to do use my iPad for. 
I've got fancy eyes. I really do. So I'm going to use my iPad if I can get to do it. Come out of the screen. And go into the magnifier, which right now is on extreme magnification. Now, I'll show you. Damn, pan up for a second. You can just barely see the bottom of the screen there. Ugh. My pen. Uh, there's Buzz. I don't know if that's Buzz or who it was. But, take a look. There he is. Um, I gotta set this so that I can have focus. what I'm doing. Now, what this is giving me is extreme magnification on a very large scale. Oh, there we go. Better have the uh, subject in the right spot with the camera. I'm just doing a quick little clean up here. And yes, this is going to involve some plowing. Now, this is probably going to take a, another episode to make sure I got all this right. Okay, that's going to require some fill in right there. I mean, right there. Well, all this really did is just create a touch, it won't work. Because, um,. One thing that I'm also trying to do is put everything into its proper proportion because uh, there's some bad flanging on these guys' hands. So. Right now, I'm just trying to correct some of my, you know, it is that 
take some extra work on my part. I knew that was going to happen too. Oh, I should be able to correct most of it now. It's like right there. Most of the stuff I thought I had corrected are still, is still there. So what I'm taking off is the um, putty. to try a brush over technique worked on a Gundam to even up some of the bad spots. I was putting the outer shell together. But I also wanted to look like he'd receive some battle damage. The Gundam not Neil here or Buzz. But I do want the suits. There's a real name. Okay. Like I said, there are some flaws here. They're turning up in the flight. I thought I'd already taken care of. I don't know, slay over flash. But I was more concerned with getting the glue down. than anything else. And the putty applied than just about everything else. Now this one looks like it almost went seamlessly. One part will be painting the Rings on these.
I can't tell you how you how to build your own how to build your models. I'm only telling you how I build mine. So what might not be enough for you it is enough for me when it comes to a little wedge. And then again, it also depends upon another factor. How badly did the model company screw up on the flanging? Because here on the legs, oh, that was horrible on this guy. Well, I have some of the fun you at now. Uh, it's probably going to have to sit there and dig all his tools and detail out. But I also know that I'm not going to be able to put, do all that. So next, he gets nice white coated paint, which I probably uh, still have one. Mix a little acrylic in there and give it some toughness. All right. That's my son. I'll tell you, one of the big pet peeves I've had with these guys is their fingers. Oh, their hands were ugly. I would kind of slowly and with as much patience digging out their fingertips as I possibly can because I can't use that much force and that's one of the things with models you cannot force something you have to be delicate with it 24 you know, as you're building check my fingertips again to make sure that I've got them so I can open them up a bit. And like, like I said, this is just detailing. There's a huge gap right in there. I know you guys can't see it, but it's one of those details that if you knew it was there, it'd drive you nuts. Let's take a look at it. Okay, these guys are ready for paint. Finally. I got, uh, I have it all down here. Yep, I do. This is one of those area details that drives you nuts when you're doing this stuff. 
work on this scale. This is the area of the land view is real bad. One part overlapping one another like this. So, let me clean that up just a little bit right here. sharp. There's a little bit of a sharp point right there. I'm going to cut. I cut off my hand. I'm now blending it in as best I can. Something that drive me nuts. If I only saw it. This is another where the two halves of the bolt wrap in the middle. And I finally got it. That drive me nuts with that guy. That's the same thing. Right. And I'm pointing, I know you can barely see it over there, but you can see it. Well, I'll zoom in a little bit better next time. But there's because they have. I want you guys bop around on the moon. Some of the no, you didn't. That was down in the NASA time stage. That R.C. Clark there. Can I ask you a question? Dumb one at that. Moronic one at that. 2001 Space Odyssey came out after the moon landing. Take a look at my boys. Okay. His thumb is still oversized. Now one thumb oversized. Gotta trim that down just a little bit more. There we go. I 
got some of that work in there. I'm going to do some more work on this during the week. And I'll broadcast that then. That's enough. Let's take a look. that in. There's a small hole in the back of uh, one of the astronauts here. Oh, yeah. oh. I'll take some shaking. That's I knew I was beginning about something. Okay. Again, this is because there was a machine. It's just something I have to fix. It's just something new. week, uh, I should say later on this week, probably Wednesday, I'll come back and start to start the process on the plan, give her back her legs. And boom, I have instant zoom. Capability. Comes in handy. 
especially with some of the mounts that I plan on doing. Like for instance, I have a sea view that I need to repaint. And that is going to come in handy. And I see if you don't want to moan and whine and bitch about it. Literally. I plan on doing that. Because it was a repop kit. And I have some major, I have a lot of complaints about that. And I also have a 69 Shelby 500 GT by um, uh, a modeling ATC. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, because they just slap three genres of car together. For that this is going now uh, I have some repainting to do here this is mostly 99% touch up but I also have to make a couple of parts that broke off actually I only one but I had to make two two or three but these uh, Venturi will which controlled the attitude of how this thing was in space. I have to fix that. I have to. I was going to. I got to clear up these edges, seal them up. So I should do that now. Because this involves sanding these off. It's not that I'm incompetent to do it, but uh, that's going to take time. So it's part area that I have to wear off with sandpaper. And that will take time. But I have the sand tool for it too, so I'm not going to worry about the time. But uh, this is going to take uh, a whole video to clean up because. There is some pretty bad planting on here now. Uh, normally, I wouldn't be too, I'm not too worried about it. It's going to get covered up. It's going to get covered up with oil. I have, because this is all covered lower section here fully. This is the only thing that's painted black. I painted the undercarriage. There's a little black, there's a decal that went on, a flag that went on here. This is he made space, you got to obey the regs. Be clearly identifiable. Which doesn't make any sense to me because then you don't want it out there. But at any rate, uh, this is going to get a unique style of paint job. You'll see what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I put gold, uh, brass foil all around it. I don't want to do that because it looks crappy. So what I'm going to do is take this stuff, dip it, and and dip and brush it on, so it looks like it's all nice and crumpled. I think I didn't even think there's a method to the crumpling. But everything's going to get covered in gold. In gold, I actually have a gold. Then after I'm done with this, I want to do. I want to go back to one of my first loves, building model airplanes. So I've got an Airfax P51 to see the airman. And I'll call her T for short. She is. And I saw a guy do a YouTube thing on this pilot. And he went out of his way. I mean, out of his way. 
he bent over backwards, kissed his own butt by shoving his head up his own butt. He said, this guy, the, the CD Airmen, did not, were not as accomplished as they were. He tried to take every last accomplishment they had away. And all he did was actually confirm every one of their accomplishments. Let's take a quick look. So 172 scale Mustang. I haven't taken it out of, of the wrapper, but I remember building this when I was a kid. A 172 scale Mustang. I not haven't taken anything out. I'm, just, I'm not doing an open box reveal type crap. But I'm saying that this one is absolutely gorgeous. Now, the way I want, what I'm going to do with this is, when I build this, that's the review, the entire build. And I want to show you something. Now, Airfix back in '69 built fairly accurate models. And uh, here's my late, here's my other Airfix model. A Catalina PBY number five. Now I just recently moved. So she's a little busted up. She's in disastrously desirable need of repair. She's not gonna get it. And one of the reasons why is I'm pissed off right now. At air effects, not for us, the Mustang, but for this one. Now, when I got this, I didn't know it until I started putting it together. But these bowls, and they're they're just slightly, just slightly out of scale. Just slightly out of scale. The window is just slightly out of scale. And this is again slightly out of scale. This whole model, there are bits and pieces of it that were out of scale. This is supposed to be a 172 scale model. But they had 148 scale pilots, and they were from 1950, they were jet pilots as the crew in here. And the crew back here, because they had gunner stations and guns in the windows, uh, they were wearing 1950s oxygen equipment for 1950s and early 60s fighter jets. Both set the crew, the pilots and the gunners, were wearing the wrong equipment. And I didn't put any of the decals on right, if anybody notices. I'm telling you I didn't. Most of you I was that mad at air effects for screwing this model up that much. The crew is out of scale, both the pilots. So I would have put those two pilots in here. <laughs> they wouldn't have fit. They would have actually come out of the canopy. These guys back here. They would have come out of the canopy too. So I wasn't too happy with them on this. So, and I lost this window. I was, I was, and I am going to fix that because she's going to become a paint whore. She's going to get made up and rebuilt. I mean, made up and made up and made up. She's going to be a practice model for my painting. So that's what she is. I'm kind of mad, mad at their effects for that, but that's another day. Like I said, like I keep saying, I don't build just one particular model. I build boats, cars, planes, trains, uh, very rarely trains. I don't know why I keep saying trains. But I also have this lady. She's a rebel. 
not bad. Although I did overpaint her, but not the decals that you see here. She's the Oregon State National Guard Aircraft 75th Anniversary uh, Strike Eagle, and she has some quite extensive tattoos. That's why I bought her. Was to get practice on putting decals on the aircraft again. And I thought I did a pretty good job, even though I did screw some of it up. So she's going to get a whole new paint job. And I plan on making her. I would love to be able to make her Japanese, but I'll give her a Japanese thing, paint, paint scheme. But I'll even screw up. And again, this is another one of my practice models that I'll be using to practice my painting on and different painting techniques. Because there's um, a painting technique for discoloring if you're using aluminum paint to make it look more realistic. And since all of her body panels are external, not internal, uh, I don't want to sit there and spend hours and hours scratching them all out. So that's what she's going to become. But I'm going to get a better one, and I will do her right. I will still treat her with respect, though. But, and the PBY, she is one of my first loves. It was one of the first models I put together as a kid. It's one of the reasons why I'm so mad. But, again, thank you, and come back and enjoy the show next week. I will be finished, uh, actually, next time. I will be finishing up this, uh, assembling this, and getting it ready for paint. Painting these guys, and getting them ready for paint. They're going to need a white coat, and then a little bit, and I mean a little bit of uh, uh, gray that should be in the seams and stuff. Uh, so give her a gray wash, give, give those two a gray wash. And finish painting up this, because uh, the, flat, the flat black is great. The only problem is it needs another coat. It needs to be cleaned up from my utensil. But I have the brushes for that. That'll be a straight brush job. I have also a couple of airbrushes here, which I will use to paint the other two models. So, I'll be back Wednesday. See you then.